Hello, welcome back to the channel, I'm EVM. Uh, now, I've been getting a lot of messages, tweets, DMs, all the usual sort of stuff from people that are worried that the charging network, the rapid charging network anyway, is getting more expensive too often to the point where they're worried that it's more expensive to use one of these, an electric vehicle, than the petrol or diesel equivalent when it is just powered by the rapid charging network. I should point that out, the majority of people who can charge at home will be charging at a very cheap rate and won't care that if it is more expensive because it only accounts to probably five or 10% of the costs of the fuel of the car anyway. But if you do use the rapid charging network an awful lot on that specific journey, is it more expensive now to use an EV than a petrol or diesel equivalent? The argument is kind of irrelevant because even if you can't charge at home, you would not exclusively use a rapid charging network to, to fuel your EV. You would use the fast charging network, which is a lot cheaper, um, and assuming it's available, would save you a ton of money over petrol and diesel. And of course, if you charge at home, absolutely so. Because it is so cheap at home, people expect it to be not as cheap, but cheaper than the petrol or diesel equivalents. And rightly so. I mean, when you think what they have to do to get fuel, where it comes from, where it gets shipped from, how it gets refined, and then how it gets to the petrol station, getting electricity to a car should be cheaper, shouldn't it? So that's what effectively I'm going to look at. Which is cheaper per mile in terms of fuel alone, nothing else, an electric car on a rapid charging network or a petrol or diesel car? Just to reiterate, you will not be paying what I'm about to show you if you cannot charge at home. This is not a comparison for those that want an EV or are thinking of getting one but have to rely on the public charging network, okay? That's for a different video entirely. This is just about the rapid charging. Okay, right, now, of course, to do such a thing, I'm going to need lots of statistics and facts and figures, which means I need to move to the whiteboard of truth. Ta-da! Here we are, it's back. Now, I've obviously pre-populated all the data, apart from this, which will be the pence per mile. Come back to that in a second. This is effectively all of the main rapid charging networks from most expensive, sorry, from cheapest to most expensive with a subsection which I'll explain down here for these. I'll, I'll come back to that in a second. So according to this, Podpoint is the cheapest rapid charging network at the moment with 25 pence per kilowatt hour. This restrictions bit on the right hand side there, that effectively means, uh, well, this for Osprey. To get 31 pence, you have to use their app. Their normal contactless payment is 36p. So that's effectively what this bit is down the side there. To get the BP Pulse on a 50 kilowatt charger at 29 pence, you have to be a registered person and I believe use their app to get that price. That is not the same price as a contactless payment as an example. So that's why we've got this bit down here. Now let me explain this, this subsection that I've got. The reason Charge Place Scotland, which is changing now to, uh, so someone else is going to look after it, they've lost the contract, have BP Pulse and thank Christ for that because someone might actually answer the phone now under an hour. The reason they're down here is because some of their rapid charges are free, some uh, 15, 20, th basically it goes from free to about 30 pence I believe, maybe 35 throughout the whole country. It's a very fragmented and random pricing structure, which means that the, they can't really belong anywhere in a static table. The next ones, BP Pulse. These are membership schemes, same one with the Osprey one there. So for example, to get 23p on a 50 kilowatt charger at BP Pulse, you have to pay £7.85 pence a month to be a member and therefore you get cheaper charging. But you never actually get 23p, do you? Because ultimately you have to add that on and then it averages out. So for example, if you did uh, 200 kilowatt hours worth of charging in a month, what you would do then, let me get my uh, phone calculator ready. What you would do then is basically say, right, 200 times, what is it, 23p, we'll use that one. That means 46 pounds for 200 kilowatt hours, but then you'd have to add 7 pounds 85 onto it, divide that by 200, and we get just shy of 27 pence per kilowatt hour. That's how much it's cost you because you, you have to have have to add the membership cost 
onto how much you're paying to charge. It's not a separate thing, it's part of the whole package. So again, the more you charge, the cheaper this becomes. The less you charge, the more expensive it becomes. So there's nowhere I can put it in effectively a static table. I have to just kind of give it its own little subsection here. Now, this bit here is how much I would uh, I have determined in a previous video, which is this one here. So if you want to know how I come to that arrangement, watch that one. I'll link it in the description below as well. 3.75 miles per kilowatt hour is what I've put as the average efficiency for all EVs. So if this is an average of an average of an average. The average of all cars throughout the year, I have put at 3.75 miles per kilowatt hour. Some will get four, some will get three, some will get two, some will get five. That's how we end up with averages. So I would say that 3.75 is the equivalent as 50 miles per gallon is to combustion engine cars. 50 is about the average, I think it's a little bit higher than that. Um, according to the RAC study that I used, uh, which is a year or two old now, granted, but I think 50 miles per gallon is pretty average. UK gallons, remember. And again, that is across the year, across all cars. There's no point in telling me if you get 70 on a long run in yours because someone else will get 20 or 30 in there. So that for me is the equivalent of that. So then we can figure out the pence per mile. So at £1.30 per litre, which according to today's RAC fuel watch is the average price, uh, well, average of petrol and diesel anyway, I think it's 129 131 respectively. So £1.30 per litre is today's current average price in this, this country, which gives you 12 pence per mile. That's how much it costs you in fuel to drive a petrol or diesel car, basically a combustion engine vehicle. So what do we get here? Let's get the calculator out again and do some more figures, which is all nice and exciting, isn't it? So 25 pence, let's do the cheapest first, pod point. 25p uh, at 3.7 miles per kilowatt hour comes out at, whoop, nearly there, 6.7 pence. I've uh, rounded that off and I've lost my pen. Where have I put my, for God's sake. Ow! It's not the light off! Come on! There we go. Oh, right on my toe. Go. So, 6.7 pence per mile if you paid 25 pence per kilowatt hour and got 3.75 miles per kilowatt hour. So, so far, it's nearly half the cost. So, rather than run through these, let's go now straight to the most expensive, Ionity. I mean, I do have to mention Ionity and BP Pulse and Osprey and subscriptions. I'll come to that in a second in, as, as to why they're more expensive and they have different price points. Uh, but at 69p, how expensive is that? At 3.75, wow. <laughs> Ionity per mile is 18.4 pence per mile. BP Pulse at 150 on contactless is the most expensive rapid charging once I explain Ionity in a second. So what does that work out to be? Because that's a more normal price than the ridiculous 69. So 42 pence, 11.2 pence, which is still, thankfully, at least for EVs anyway, cheaper than petrol. Uh, right, now let me explain Ionity and why ultimately it's not as straightforward as it seems. They charge 69 pence for, for anybody to use it, which is extortionate, clearly. But if you have a car that has a subscription scheme and the manufacturer of that car was a member of Ionity who helped partly fund Ionity in the first place, like the Mercedes Me um, membership or subscription, whatever you want to call it, I think they get it at either 30 or 35 pence per kilowatt hour. So Ionity are effectively saying, all right, anybody can access our network, but if you're not a part of the club, if your manufacturer didn't chip in and help us build this Ionity network, then we're going to charge you 69p. Clearly designed to try and stop the general public from clogging up their charges so their members get a better experience. Think of it like Tesla going, we're going to op open up all our superchargers for everyone, but it's going to be 69p. I think most people would be happy with that because it's like, well, it's expensive and if you ever need it in a pinch, it's there. 
However, the problem with Ionity is that that is partly funded with public money, with EU money. So I'm a little bit perturbed over that one, but I can understand why they've done it and I don't mind members only clubs. After all, if they've paid for the network, then like Tesla, why not? But not all of them paid for it, did they? Like I said, public funding. The electric highway, when it started, was also under um, EU or public funding. It used public funding and Nissan as well. So, you know, several years of appalling service. That should have been better considering we don't pay for it. There's all sorts of arguments and that's probably for a different video. But clearly, 42p is close to the ceiling where we need rapid charging to be at because any more than that, it's gonna be uh, more expensive than petrol, which it doesn't have to be. There's no law to say it should be, as I said. I don't know, I, th I feel like everybody's trying to shoe on us down a membership route so they can get a monthly income, whether you use it or not. Let me fill in the rest of these now off camera so I don't bore you to death. And then uh, we'll see where each person comes to. And then I'll try and explain the BP Pulse way of doing things because for me, it's way too complicated. Right, so there we are. That's everyone else filled in. Now, let me try and explain the nightmare that is the BP Pulse way of charging people. You've got basically six possible outcomes, six possible prices when you visit a BP Pulse rapid charger. I mean, if you think about it and, I don't know, picture one of your parents or a an uncle or an auntie or somebody that's basically new to EVs and doesn't care about cars or maybe just new to EVs. I'm not going to say an old person. I just have, but basically somebody who maybe get easily confused. They would go to their first BP Pulse, BP Pulse rapid charger, plug it in and go, right, how much is this going to cost me? And what you'd have to know is, well, is that a 50 or a 150 upwards charger? Kilowatt? What, what, what speed charger is it? I don't know. Well, you'd figure that out eventually. All right, well, that, that, then if it's a 150, it's one of these three prices. Are you using contactless? Are you uh, a registered user? Or are you a member? Because depending on which you are, that's the one of the three prices, depending on the, you get my point. Why have six possible outcomes just for charging? I mean, it's not as if you have a 50 and a 150 at every site. So you've got the choice of a cheaper one or a more expensive. So sometimes you're forced into using the more expensive charger. And this is another thing here, which I'm, I don't know what the, what the outcome should be, whether or not they should carry on doing this. Because a lot of people in the messages do not like the fact that BP charge more for their higher powered chargers. And I can understand why. I can understand, well, both sides, if I'm honest. BP would probably say the chargers are more expensive, the grid connection is more expensive, there are presumably higher costs. I don't know about that. But then the logic of that kind of does fail a little bit because no other charge network anywhere in the UK charges more depending on the speed of the rapid charger, whether it's a 50 or a 150 or whatever. They all have flat rates for the, for the speed of charge. The only difference you have is whether you use your app or not or whatever. So no one else does it, which suggests it's something they've concocted by themselves. The Zoe, I'll use that as an example. That's got CCS, only goes up to 50. If you use a 150 kilowatt charger on that car, you will get the most the car can take, 50. But you will still pay for the 150 rate, even though you're not getting that rate. So is that unfair? Because as I said, they don't have both at every site. If you had a 50 and a 150, then that's fine. You would just say, well, I'll go for the cheaper option because that's all my car can take. But they don't. They either have 50s or 150s, it seems. There might be some where they've got both, but it's, it's quite rare. So I don't know, what do you think? Is there a justifiable reason? Because presumably the charger might be more expensive for a 150 as opposed to a 50, but then are they still more expensive? Surely all chargers now that have been made are at a 150 plus standard. So therefore they're no really, not really any more expensive than, than, than a 50 would be. It's the same unit as it were. I don't know. This is a little out of my skill set. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Is that fair? Should BP Pulse get rid of this kind of separation of speeds? Is it just basically a way of making more money or is it justifiable? Um, so I don't know, what do you think? Are Instavolt correct in charging 40p? Because they're usually the go-to company for most people for reliability and ease of use. 
is 30p from the electric highway where it should be at. And I have to mention the electric highway because I've been a vocal kind of complainer about them for years, and rightly so. I've got mountains of evidence as to how they've been a barrier to EV adoption for several years. The fact that they were first means jack. It doesn't make a difference. That doesn't give them a pass to provide crap service for years. But now it's, of course, changing. Very much so. They've basically given part of their company over to GridServe, and GridServe are replacing all their chargers, I think by the end of summer, with um, new contactless payment ones, which is exactly what people want. And a lot of them will be high powered as well. I don't know if it's all or most, but the electric highway could go from being the one to avoid. I mean, look at the Auto Express uh, surveys they've done. They literally came 10th out of 10 in every category. They were that bad. But in the space of 12 months, they might end up being, well, in the best positions at a very attractive price with no subscription and you can use contactless. Ultimately, the goal of this video was hopefully to find out is petrol or diesel cheaper than electric? Well, apart from the anomaly of Ionity, which hopefully I've explained as to why it's at that ridiculous price for most people, um, I would say we are on the cusp, quite frankly. Instable are one of the best networks for reliability, as I just said, and they're 10.7 pence per mile at the moment as opposed to one pound, uh, sorry, 12p. So as a percentage, it's still better off, but not massively so. This is not what you will end up paying if you cannot charge at home, okay? Do not think if you don't have a drive and you're gonna have to rely on public charging, this is what you'll be paying. If I couldn't charge at home, I would be using fast chargers predominantly, you know, when you go to a supermarket or uh, somewhere where the car's parked for an hour or two or three, um, even a bit at a time. You don't have to fill the car every, every time you stop. So they are much cheaper. Fast chargers are a lot cheaper. So apart from a few people who will use nothing but rapid chargers, I think that's very, very rare. This is not an indication as to how it is for those that can't charge at home, but clearly there is a massive benefit to being able to charge at home. Uh, I get that an awful lot. I'm in an ivory tower apparently because I have a driveway. All of a sudden the electric highway are looking like they're going to take over as the go-to network. Assuming of course that they don't put the price up because a lot of other people have. BP Pulse have recently done a price increase so like a few days ago. In fact it's not even started yet. Instavolt have just put the price up. I think Genie Point will be doing it soon but I might be wrong on that one. Okay well Hopefully that was useful to someone. Um, feel free in the comments below to give me your opinion. Does this change anything to you? Does this make you think, well, I, I might drop it charge at this network instead of that network? Uh, okay, thank you for watching. I'll see you soon. Uh, like, subscribe, all the usual crap. And um, bye.